Hello, and welcome to Code Monkeys Blocks Jumper. This is a Let's Play Hour of Code. I will try to walk you through how to present. Um, now, most likely, uh, your students will be on Chromebooks uh, that have a very low resolution, so I'm uh, simulating that right now. Uh, you don't get to see very much on the screen, uh, and they will have to scroll to find a lot of things. On the left, you have generally uh, information on what you're going to do. This can be confusing if your students are reading too quickly. They'll try to do what it's showing without understanding how to. They will always want to scroll down to the instructions. A key thing about the instructions is the lower instructions will be grayed out. Um, they need to do the instructions uh, one at a time and do the check or run or some other step. If they think they've done this step and they've moved on, then when they actually uh, succeed at this step, the later steps won't realize that it have been done and they'll have to go back and redo it. Um, down here we have the libraries. These are the block libraries. Right now we have the movement library up with the movement blocks. They're color-coded. Um, and you do have to scroll over a lot in order to see all of them. And over on the right, we have the tabs. Um, and we have sprites, which we have two sprites on the board, a monkey and a star. Widgets, which um, I'm not sure if we use in this. Sounds and the game tab, where you can change uh, a number of elements. Um, and the run to get things started. Um, we just lost the fact that we were stuck on a monkey, so let's click the monkey, and now we have, this says that we're uh, programming the monkey, basically. We have our on run block, and we are going to drag a step block from the movement library, click on movement, and drag the step block up. So some students might not be familiar with using a trackpad in the first place, or with clicking and uh, especially with dragging and scrolling can be very difficult. So it can be good to walk through uh, the first exercise or a chunk of the first exercise and then uh, let them uh, do it themselves. Uh, depending on their visual acuity, you can also do a control minus to get more to show up on the screen. Um, I'm going to run it like this, which is uh, how it's more likely to be for your students. So um, one thing about blocks programming is, you know, there's a little divot down on this one. And then on this block, there's a divot down and a divot down. You want to mat to lock them together when you're dragging and close to it. It'll snap and you can let go. And then we will check. <clears throat> And it gives us the next instruction. So change one to 300 in the step block. So they need to click in to the one and type 300 and then check, click on run and see if the monkey reaches the star. Magic. So uh, students often get stuck here because they're looking at the instructions and the instructions don't continue. They're looking at stop and they'll try to stop and run over and over again and not get any further. The key thing is the bright yellow, great job, next. That's uh, what you're supposed to click through. Now we're on exercise two of 10. Uh, again, they'll read this, they'll look at a loop block. They will often gloss over the explanatory text and look at the code example, and they'll, they'll raise their hand because they don't know how to add a loop block. Um, if they scroll down to the instructions, though, it tells them drag a loop block from the control library. So we click on the control library, and there's the loop block, um, and we drag it to the on run. Now, notice the step is gone. It's reset that part of the program from us. So we're just going to check this part, and then we need to go back to the movement library and put our step one in a loop. So now, when we hit run, we're going to loop forever until we hit stop. Um, step one forward. Does that look right? Yes. So now click on run and see if the monkey reaches the star. And we don't have to hit stop or anything like that. Just click next. 
from the great job. Uh, okay, now we're in the star, and it tells us a lot of things about Oncolide, um, but the first instruction is add a sound by clicking on the green plus button. So they've pre-selected the sounds tab. If a student has clicked off of the sounds tab, they won't know what's going on. So sounds tab, add new. They can pick any sound and they might have fun with that. Um, you might want headphones to allow them to play the sounds without uh, bothering everyone else. Um, but we'll just add that and we need to name it win. So I click on the sound, the little um, settings icon here and change that to win. And as soon as I've typed win, W-I-N, all lowercase, it goes on to the next um, element. Now it says, choose the star sprite from the sprites tab. You can do that by going to sprites and clicking star. Uh, it just auto selected star. Or um, you can click the star on the actual game board here, either way. And then we want to drag a play sound block from the game and sounds library and put it in the on collide block. Check it. And we want to drag a destroy block from the display library and place that inside the on collide block. Now I'm pretty sure if I put them in the wrong order, technically the code would work, but if I check it, oh, I had a student do this and it didn't work. So, um, uh, something else might have gone on. If it doesn't work and you can't figure out why, sometimes just reloading the page will get it back into a state where you can uh, go through the instructions again. Let us run and see if the monkey reaches the star. It played a sound and uh, the star disappeared. Next. They can click X through this. Um, and it seems like it just reset us. Oh, no, no, no. It really seems like it. But now we're adding a star sprite and naming it star. So before the star sprite was already added for us, now we're learning how to add it. So that can be a little confusing that it disappeared, as you just saw. Um, and then uh, it takes you to sprites, edit sprite parameters. Here's the X. If, um, if they have gone off of the sprites or lost it, click that widget again, and then down here they might have to scroll this area in order to find all of the proper properties or parameters. Um, and change that to 500. And then allow gravity, again, uh, can be hard to find. Uncheck. And then check immovable. And then we go to events library and drag the on collide. Check. And then game and sounds library, we want to play sound. Check. And another destroy from the display. So one thing here is that um, now on the monkey code, um, we don't have any of the collides or play sounds. On the star code, we do. And we had to recreate it because the star was deleted and then click on run and see that the monkey reaches the star. Great job. Uh, now we're going to go into more complicated things um, that are really cool. So change the world's width to 1200. It's auto-selected game for me. It might not do that for your students. Uh, change world width to 1200. And this can be a, a point of confusion. It goes off the screen and they're like, oh, do I hit stop? Now the instruction comes up and you hit stop. You have to wait for it to tell you to. Uh, if you don't wait for it to tell you to, you stop, start, stop, start. Um, eventually you have to start it and have it go far enough to trigger the instruction. Now camera target to monkey, that's also in the game tab. Camera target, monkey. Now run. And as we get off the screen, we follow the monkey. Note, the monkey's walking on the, the ground. Uh, it doesn't just fall and disappear. Um, and now we click on stop. Uh, the next part that can be hard to find is this little widget at the top. Um, click on the right, drag to the left, click to the right, drag to the left. Um, 
and back and forth. Click on the arrow icon to switch back to interacting. Um, add tiles to make a path to the star. With this paintbrush, you can select any of these tiles that are showing and make a nice simple path. Uh, you can also erase them. If you erase them, uh, the monkey will fall through. If you make the path impossible and hit run, the monkey will go to the end and stop. And you will have to stop, erase, and fix the path to the star run. Great job. Uh, now we're going to learn about different speeds. Um, so scroll down. Uh, one thing students might do is they see, oh, there's this little like puzzle piece. It says 1.4. I'm going to change this puzzle piece to 1.4. That's the wrong thing to do. Uh, another thing they'll do is they'll see drag set speed from the movement library. And they'll, you have to scroll, 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 set speed. And sometimes they'll delete the loop and step because they just wanted to add the set speed. Um, then they'll have to add the loop and step back in. Note the block must be before the loop block, otherwise the speed will never be set. Uh, and here we haven't set it to 1.4 yet. We've just, we're just following the instructions explicitly. Now, actually, we change it to 0.5. So the 1.4 was a, a herring, red herring, and uh, check. And then the monkey moves really slow. And you have to wait for it to actually tell you that you can hit stop. Now we change 0 0.5 to 1.4, check, and run. Run, monkey, run. Great job. Next. Now, on game tap um, from the events library, again, scroll, scroll, scroll. Last one here. And we're still doing this on the monkey sprite. Um, it is not letting me drag that. Let's see. Okay, so it was not letting me drag when the um, piece was over. Oh, now it is when the piece was over the other blocks, or at least that's what it felt like. So that could be a random little problem to check. Drag a jump block from the movement library. Uh, one other note that I, I should have said much earlier, if the students are playing around and just adding a bunch of sprites, um, that is going to confuse the instructions and it won't know which monkey to use or which star, and it probably won't let you uh, continue through. So if they've done that, better to just reload the page and allow them to start from the beginning of the exercise that they're on. Reloading will start at whichever number exercise they were on. Uh, jump from the movement library inside on game tap and then run the next thing is they won't understand necessarily where to tap or click so they're going to want to click in this area uh, in the game area in the top right they'll also be like oh no he fell i need to stop and start and try again actually as the game is written so far you can run here and then click and that is how high the monkey jumps, so you don't actually have to time it just right. Um, now we're going to add another sound and call it fail. I'll go with a cartoon boing. Fail. And choose the monkey sprite. We're still on the monkey sprite. On collide with world bounds from the events library. And change left to down. And then from the game and sounds library, we want a reset game inside the on collide with world bounds and a play sound from game and sounds. And we want to play sound, oh, check. And we want to change win to fail. Click run and let the monkey fall inside the gap. If they're too clever and just have him keep jumping then they won't actually succeed in this step 
stop, run again, let the monkey fall. And right now, the game resets and the monkey just keeps on falling. Great job. Next. Now we're going to use our first widget. Um, so they need to be in the widgets tab now. Add new dialog. And it's already called dialog, so you can just continue. Uncheck the show option, which hides the dialog. Um, now, drag a function do something block from the object functions library. And we're on the dialog sprite. Objects functions. This is the do something function. It doesn't say function, but it says to do something. Um, we drag it in and we change it to win message and you want it to be exactly the right capitalization and spacing and then set text from the widgets library. So we need to get back to, oh, the widgets library. That's another thing. Widgets library, widgets tab. We want widgets library, set text, in the win message and set the text to you want. So you type in the little empty spot and change it to you one and you want the capitalization and spacing to be exactly the same. And then a draw uh, show block from the display library inside the win message function block. Now choose the star sprite from the sprites tab. Again you can choose the star from the game screen or from the sprites tab. Um, drag the dialog.win message function block from the other objects functions. So now other objects functions knows about this function that we just re uh, wrote. And we're going to put dialog.win message in the onclide block. Click on run and try to get the monkey to the star. So this can be frustrating if students aren't good at clicking, um, but at least the game resets right away. Oh, that was a lot of things to jump over. They can also, if, if for an easier time, you can the, the students can paint a bridge across of the um, across the area or make other obstacles. Great job. Next. So now remove some tiles to create gaps. Um, we'll just do a minimal. Okay, we did that. Um, now make sure monkey is selected and drag set speed from the movement block connected to the on run block. So we've done this before, but we're doing it again. Movement library. Set speed. Again, before the loop, and we it sounds like we can set any speed. Um, so let's make this uh, two and see how fast it goes. Then choose the dialog widget from the widgets tab. So widgets, dialog, and uh, when the monkey reaches the star, set it inside the empty set text block. Oh, this is now empty, so you reached the star. Click on run and let's see our new message and how we're running so much faster. Oh, and it took out, it filled in all of the holes before. So course completed. You can play your game to see it uh, all on its own. Boom. No name game. Uh, and if you want to go back and edit because you didn't choose edit in the first place, you can go back in your browser 